If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We know from the work kinetic energy theorem that the work done on this particle is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. But we also know that the work done by a variable force, and we know that this is a variable force because the force depends on the variable x, the work done by a variable force is equal to an integral of some initial position to some final position of the force function with respect to x. Now, we only have to integrate with respect to x in this problem, by the way, because the particle is moving along the x-axis only, as stated in the question. So this is the work done by the variable force, and again, according to the work energy theorem, this equals the change in kinetic energy, or the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. What we can do is actually fill in the expression for that variable force. So that's this expression here. We're going to substitute that in for the f of x. We'll also note that we were given an initial position and a final position. So initially, the position is x equals 0. So we can come into our integral over here and replace that lower limit with 0. And then the final position was 3 meters. So we can replace the upper limit with 3 meters. And then we can go ahead and actually integrate the left-hand side of this equation. Now, the variable here is x, not c. c actually is a constant as stated in the question. So when we integrate cx, we're going to have cx raised to the power of 2 divided by 2. And then when we integrate 3x squared, we're going to have 3x to the power of 3 divided by 3. And of course, those 3s will actually cancel, leaving us with just x cubed. And our limits of integration, again, are from 0 to 3. And the laws of calculus require us to plug the upper limit in for x first. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we would have c multiplied by 3 squared over 2 minus 3 cubed. That's what the value we get when we plug in the upper limit. We then have to plug in the lower limit. Now the lower limit is 0. So if we plug 0 in for x, both this term will become 0 and this term will become 0. So in essence, when we subtract the quantity of 0, it's actually negligible. So we don't even have to write it in. So this is our expression here. And once again, that's equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And we could go ahead and plug in those values right now. The final kinetic energy was the 11 joules. And the initial kinetic energy was the 20 joules. And of course, when we subtract these, we're going to get negative 9 joules. When we go ahead and simplify the left-hand side, so we're going to have 9c over 2 minus 27 is equal to the negative 9. We'll add 27 to both sides of the equation so that we get 18. Multiply both sides by 2 to give us 36 on the right. And then finally, divide both sides by 9. We can see that c is equal to 4. Now as for the unit, we can come back and look at this expression over here for the force. And we know that this term right here is a force term, so it has to come out in newtons. So basically what we can say is that cx must equal a newton. Now x is a distance, so that's measured in meters. So we have c times a meter is equal to newtons. And then we can divide both sides by a meter. We can see that the unit of c is a newton per meter. So our final answer will be 4 newtons per meter. 